In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this distorted gradient background inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we're first just going to begin by creating a new solid. So we'll go layer, new, solid, and you can select any color because it doesn't matter which color you choose at this point. Then press OK. And then we'll go into effects and presets and search for four color gradients. If you press just the number four, it should come up at the bottom. Then you just want to drag this on to your video like this onto your solid. And you've got this four color gradient now generated. So if we go up into the four color gradient option up here, you can see we've got point one, color one, point two, color two, and so on. So as you can see, this point up here, this is point one, and this is the color of point one. So first of all, you want to go ahead and change your color scheme. So we'll select color one and we'll change this to a color of your choice. So I'm going to select a blue color scheme for this first option. So the first color can be a darker blue. The second can be a lighter blue. The third can be a, yeah, we'll go for another light blue. And then the fourth one can be more of a purpley somewhere down there. There you go. That looks great. And then I'm just going to move all of these points closer in towards the center. Now we'll scrub up to the very beginning. We'll create a brand new keyframe on 0.1 color one, 0.2 color two, 0.3 color three, 0.4 color four. And then we'll move roughly two seconds into the right. And I'm just going to move the position of all of these points around. So 0.1 goes across to there, 0.2 goes down, 0.4 comes across and then 0.3 comes up. So if we play this back, you can see we've got this nice subtle gradient animation now happening. So I'm just gonna open up the black solid. We'll go into the effects. And then we'll go into the four color gradients and we've got positions and colors and I'm just going to hover over that keyframe. So at this point here, now at this point, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to change the color of all of these points. So I'm going to go for more of a pinky red color here. Yeah, that looks really nice. So if we play this back, you can see we've got this nice gradient evolving into this pink. Now this does look great, but the problem is at the moment we are seeing all of these different points animating across. You can see they look like circles almost animating across. So to fix that, I'm just going to go into blend and I'm just going to increase the blend up to a higher number. So 200 fixes that problem for us. There we go. So from here, we've only got a two second animation. So in order to fix that, in order to keep looping this, we're just going to highlight all of those keyframes. We'll go Command C to copy or Control C if you're on Windows. So Command and C. Then we'll go roughly four seconds in and we'll paste that with Command and V. And then we'll do it again roughly at around eight seconds. So at this point, we have got a 10 second video, which is just looping back and forth between these points and these colors. So you can see at this phase, we've got a really nice looping gradient background. Of course, though, that's not the look that we're looking for. We're looking for something a bit more weird and a bit more fantastical. So I'm just going to close this down and I'm going to move on to the next effect. So from here, I'm just going to begin by creating a new adjustment layer. So we'll go layer, new adjustment layer, and then we'll go and search for CC smear in the effects and presets panel, drag that onto the adjustment layer, and as you can see, you get this smear effect happening. So I'm just going to change the from to the bottom left corner and the two into the top right corner roughly. And then as you can see, you've got reach, which is just going to make this longer and shorter. And then you've got radius. So I'm just going to increase the radius until we get this weird effect now happening. As you can see, this looks really cool right now. I'm just going to add another CC smear onto that though. Now I'm just going to change the from up to the top left corner. We'll give that a go and we'll pull the toe to the bottom right and we'll just increase the radius again. So as you can see, we've got this weird warping animation. Feel free at this point to go ahead and change any of these points that you get a slightly different look. There you go. Let's just play this back and see what we've got. So as you can see, that does look really cool. If I turn off the adjustment layer, by the way, you can see that the original layer is not affected. It's just the adjustment layer, which is being affected here. Now from here, we can move on to the next effect, which is turbulent displacement. So I'm just gonna go effects and presets and search for turbulent displace. There you go, that's this effect. And we'll drop that onto our adjustment layer. And instantly you can see we've just got this wiggly effect. So I'm just going to begin by changing the displacement from turbulent to a cross displacement. 
then I'll change the amount up to a higher number. So somewhere around 200 should do the trick. Then we'll go size and you can increase this to get a really weird jelly effect. As you can see, that looks really weird. And then we're just going to go to complexity and you can increase this or decrease this. It's completely up to you. As you can see, it's getting a bit more complex over here as we increase that. I think that's a bit much though. So I'm just going to keep this somewhere down at around two. And then I'm going to go to the very beginning, create a brand new keyframe on evolution. Go towards the end and we'll just rotate this around a few times. So it's just going to do all of these different wiggly moves, as you can see. Then from this point, you just want to copy that black solid. So we'll go Command C, Command V. We'll grab those top two layers and we'll put them in their own pre-comp. So right click, pre-compose. And if we play this back, you can see we've got this really weird dynamic background now happening. Of course, you can offset the top so that you get more of a noticeable difference like this. Or you can just keep it in time so that this fade off is a bit more subtle. Now, as you can see at the moment, this does look really cool, but these edges are just a little bit too harsh. If I put this in full resolution, you can really see that some of these edges are getting a little bit harsh. So to fix that, we'll just go into the pre-comp and then I'm just going to put a round of blurring on top of this. So I'll just search for blur. Any one of these should do the trick. You've got Gaussian blur, camera lens blur. I'll just do Gaussian blur for ease. And then just increase that Gaussian blur so that you soften up those edges. So I've got around 60, 70, somewhere around here. And then we'll select repeat edge pixels. Close down this pre-comp. And when we play this back in our main composition, you can see we've got this really nice dynamic background now happening. So of course, from here, you can just highlight both of those layers. You can pre-comp this and call this background. And then from there, you can just go ahead and you can add your text on top of this background. And then, of course, you could always change the track mat of this effect so that you can actually put this effect in your words. So we'll change the track mat of the background layer to Alpha Matte Brooker. And that weird background is now in our text. Or alternatively, we can just keep this cool background behind our text. It's completely up to you. Now, just a quick note, you'll see some of these settings were very rough. If I jump back into the background pre-comp and then the pre-comp pre-comp, you can see these are just really random numbers. So the smear, you can do whatever you like. So I can pull it down here. I can pull that up here. I can pull the second smear to wherever I like. So let's pull that one up there. Turbulent displace, we can add more, we can decrease the size, we can increase the size, we can add some complexity. It's completely up to you, like there's no specific set number here. Even though I've made all of those changes, this background still looks great in here. So if I go back to the main comp, you can see this is what that background now looks like. So don't worry too much in this about getting the precise numbers. You can just experiment with this and figure out what you like the look of. But this just adds a little bit more character than your normal standard gradient background animation. So there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.